All right. I just want to uh, welcome everybody to tonight's uh, USA JPA World Jigsaw Puzzle Champions virtual social. <laughs> kind of a mouthful there. Um, tonight is all about just talking about the upcoming worlds in September and answering your questions. A lot of you are planning to attend. Some of you are not, but you're just here out of curiosity. We welcome you all. And we'll start with introductions from the rest of our board, which has grown. You might have noticed there's a few more people here. So uh, Becca, why don't you get us started? With, with an introduction or? Yeah. Oh, sure. Who are, who are you? <laughs> what are you about? That's a great, I don't know. It's Wednesday. I have no idea who I am. No, it's Thursday. See, oh. I've already lost my mind. It's been a long week at work. Hi, everyone. My name is Becca. I'm one of the new members of the board. It is so lovely to see all of you, and I'm looking forward to seeing some of you in Spain as well. Uh, I reside in the San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, I'll be uh, pairing up with people from all over the place, though, with a partner from Colorado and team from, uh, I see Andrea waving, and then also some folks from Washington State. So we're going to have some many state teams looking forward to competing, and uh, thanks for joining us today. I'll turn it over to Heather. Thanks, Becca. I'm Heather. Um, I'm from the Twin Cities, Minnesota uh, area, and I'm also looking forward to Spain. This will be my first time going to Spain, um, and I'm teaming up with um, Katie Everson, who I see there as my Paris partner, and uh, Liz and Josh Nelson, we're the Minnesota puzzlers for Spain, so I'm really looking forward <laughs> to it. So I'm happy to be joining the board. And I'll go ahead and introduce myself next. So I'm Ali Krasny, um, one of the board members as well. And I can't remember what all of you guys were saying because I was doing something in the background. Uh, but uh, this will be my third time going to Worlds, I think. Yes, Faith has beaten me twice at solo. So I need to, third time's a charm. I'll get her this time. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I'm, uh, team up with the Golden State Puzzlers, and I'm actually pairing this year with Faith, who is our other board member, that I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name's Faith Taylor. I live in Atlanta, so I get to, I'm the Southeast person on the board. Um, I am super excited. Also, my third time going to Worlds, and I'm, I wasn't going to say anything, Allie, but. <laughs> <laughs> we have a um, small rivalry for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, super excited about my team turtle i see you're on the call yay um we had a great team practice a few weeks ago so much fun i'm super excited for world i love that the olympics are this summer like huge fan and that's kind of what it feels like when you go so um, i see a lot of familiar faces so i'm really looking forward to seeing everyone again and and new faces as well so welcome Cool. Well, I want to encourage all of you, those of you who are first timers, if you're willing to raise your hand or put something in the chat, we're, we're curious how many of you are going to Worlds for the first time this year? Oh, yeah, quite a few people. I know a lot of people have their video off. You can also use the little hand raise reaction at the bottom. Awesome. Yay. Okay, okay cool. That's very cool. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is right at the get-go, just give each of us as board members and competitors, give our like number one pointer for just the world championship in general. So we'll start off with that. What's what's all of your number one pointer? I'm going to share my mine immediately. My number one pointer is to buy yourself a little fan like this. <laughs> that you can use uh it like sits up and it's like a little it runs on battery power because the venue does get uh very warm so i can demonstrate this is just a nice quiet little electric fan it's fantastic it runs for hours so that's my number one recommendation, especially if you're of a certain age and you get hot flashes. <laughs> this thing is a dream come true. So that's my number one pointer. Bring a fan because <laughs> it can get really warm in the venue. So uh, we'll just go in the same order for introductions. Becca, do you have a pointer you want to share? Uh, yeah, my number one pointer is around uh, being prepared, being mentally prepared for the presence of cameras. Um, I 
didn't quite realize how present the cameras would be and how close they get to your table. And so I was a little distracted by that at my first world's experience last year. They will come over to you for the most part when you are close to finishing. And I would freeze up because I would be like, oh God, people are watching me and I can't find a piece. Um, so you just want to think about that in advance and be prepared to ignore them as much as you can. <laughs> Heather, I know it's your first time going to Worlds, but do you have a, a tip in terms of preparation, perhaps? Uh, I've definitely been preparing. Um, the biggest thing for me is staying calm. Um, I get really frantic, and I know with Nationals, it was all about staying calm. And then I guess I'm just going to continue doing that. Just don't get overwhelmed. I mean, especially with cameras, but just being in a global competition it's just it's so exciting <laughs> cool ali what's your pointer they're saying to just chill. <laughs> chill um i think mine would be to practice in the proper conditions uh so i sorry i was just about something in chat i um so you have a half table um, and if you're normally practicing on a much larger table, it's going to make a big difference in your condition. So um, sometimes I get lazy and I practice on the bigger table because it's more fun that way. But I'm trying to be better about practicing uh, in the small conditions because the more you do it, the more efficient you are at managing your pieces because it's tougher, especially I think it's a little easier if you have a portrait. But if you have a landscape, you really have to um, be prepared for that. And I kind of think with my solo finals last year it was I'm not sure if I was fully prepared for the horizontal so I will be this time. <laughs> um I of course have like three things <laughs> um first <laughs> nothing to do with competing but you need to be prepared in other ways one you will go home with a lot of puzzles be prepared to bring home those puzzles I bring a, like a foldable bag that comes, that's real small. And then I can either put my dirty clothes in and like check that, or like I can fit the puzzles in or my suitcase. Uh, super important to just be, you know, be aware of that and do that. Um, other thing, it is an international event. Make new friends. Everywhere you go, you're going to see puzzlers. And, you know, most of the international competitors will speak English because that's the common language. Um, but it, it's just, it's so wonderful to go back and, and then you can also, you know, you become friends on uh, <clears throat> social media and it's just, so it's a really good time. So, so I say branch out and, and just have a good time. And I think my last piece of advice is um, just have fun. Like um, there was kind of nothing more painful than that pairs puzzle. Kyle, I see you're on here. Yeah. We were like pushing, <laughs> I was pushing pieces around. I think Kyle was actually puzzling um, I, and it was frustrating, but you know, you kind of walk away and, and, and the experience was still a wonderful experience. So like, just just enjoy it and take it all in. Awesome. Well, um, one of the things that we wanted to do before we jumped into questions too is just a quick look at um, the WPC website and look at the schedule and then a quick kind of review of the rules. I don't think we'll get into super detail on everything, but I do think it's not a bad idea to just kind of set the stage for what the expectations going to be of like the order of competition etc so if i can find the share my screen function <laughs> which i can't because it's tiny for some reason oh i know why okay forget it i will figure this out okay um, there we go share and um, oops nope okay uh hopefully this works properly it's being a little weird okay um can you guys see the schedule we can see your whole screen there you go okay great perfect all right so this year's schedule is a little different it's getting longer <laughs> um the reason for that is because uh alfonso is trying to make it as big as possible in terms of being able to bring in the most individuals to compete 
And whenever you make it bigger, that means you have more divisions because they are going to stick with the venue or in the Millennium Dome, just like we have been the past couple of years. Um, and there is a limitation to that venue. There's only room for a little, I think this year there's maybe 102 tables or something like that, or 104 tables. So um, they do have a spectator area. It's not super big, um, but people do fit in there okay. Um, so when you're not competing, you can go over and watch. There's also a big, huge uh, screen at the front of the building and inside the building, and that shows the live stream on it. So if you're wanting to just hang out in the venue, you can see all the action uh, in there really easily, even though everything's kind of facing the opposite direction from where the spectator area is. The spectators are kind of behind all of the competitors, um, but you can go around on the sides a little bit and see some of the action along the side. But yeah, the schedule is quite long. Um, there's the Tuesday night opening ceremony, um, and on Wednesday, few people have asked what this proposed, you know, record world Guinness thing is. I've asked Alfonso to clarify that, and um, I believe it's kind of still in the works. My guess is that there's going to be an attempt to break um, the record that was set last year on the, I think, was it a 2000 piece Guinness mm -hmm. puzzle? Yeah. So my guess is that there's going to be an attempt to break that record. But I'm not 100% sure what that looks like, if it is invite only, if anybody can go and just volunteer to participate, not really sure. So as soon as we know more on that, we'll be sure to share that out with all of you and with all of the people that are signed up to attend so that they have a better idea what that is. Um, hey, Val, the afternoon. Huh? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I oh, um, okay. wanted to take a quick second and um, while you mentioned the opening ceremony in case uh, any questions pop up surrounding that. It isn't a required, um, right. it's not required to attend. Right. So if anyone's getting in later than that on Tuesday or on Wednesday morning, um, yeah. not required. Though if you are competing on Wednesday, you should get there early enough that you don't have a problem. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's pretty much, it's not like a situation where you can email Alfonso on Wednesday morning and say, hey, I missed my train or my flight got delayed and I need to switch to a different division. That kind of stuff is really hard for him to make those adjustments during once the competition has started. He's probably not even looking at his email because yeah. he's incredibly busy running the venue and the event. So uh, definitely plan to be there well in advance so that you know you're not going to miss your division. One of the questions we had was, when will we find out our division? It'd be lovely if we could find out right now. So if people are making travel plans, they know when they need to be there. But unfortunately, we usually don't know that until just a couple of weeks before the event. If that, I think last they, time it was maybe a week before, or do you remember? They posted on Instagram that it will be. Um, oh, uh, did he set a date? Uh, it will, it'll be, I think just a week before it could be two yeah. weeks before, but, um, they said, because there's so many last minute adjustments, mm -hmm. um, that they, that that's when it'll be. Yeah. So uh, we also so had yeah, a request again, for you to zoom in a little so that folks can see the schedule. Sure. Sorry. Is it not showing up that way? Um, okay. There you go. Hopefully. Thanks. Love. Is that better? Okay. No, these are all great points. So yeah, I think you should try to plan to be there by Wednesday morning if you're doing the individual competition, even if you end up finding out that you're not going to compete until Thursday, it's probably just a good idea. Um, so yeah, individual rounds start Wednesday and then continue into Thursday and then first round pairs uh, Thursday evening. Um, and then it's and then we have semifinals and pairs, which I don't believe we had last time. I think it was just one pairs round and then you got into the qual you qualified or you didn't qualify for the final. So there's more pairs rounds, which means we have a semifinal. Um, we did announce, and some of you may have seen this, that the final in the pairs is going to be a thousand piece puzzle. Don't worry, they're not going to give you a half of a table and have you share with other people like we did at Nationals. Uh, what they've decided is just every pair gets a full table. But what that means is there's only going to be like 100 pairs that make it into the final round. So in that semifinal, uh, you're going to have a lot fewer people advancing um, into the final. So it's just going to be a little bit harder to make it into that. 
Um, and when we look at the rules, you can see a little better kind of how that breaks down in terms of qualifying for subsequent rounds. Um, Saturday is teams competing for the first um, and second round, or sorry, first round. Um, so there is a qualifier this time for teams. Um, and then uh, the final pairs in the evening. Uh, it's going to get to be a little bit of a later night that evening with the final individual happening from 7.30 to 8.45. Um, so Saturday promises to be a long day if you're doing well and you make it into those final rounds and then you're also doing two 1,000 piece puzzles uh, earlier in the day in teams. That's going to be a challenge, but you know. It's a now, lot of fun. Yes. Just to address a question mm -hmm. quick um, sure. from the, um, oh, sorry about that, uh, from the chat, uh, since I think it kind of applies to what you're discussing, are the competition times randomly selected or can you request uh, your time slot? No, you can't request your time slot. He's working with about 1,200 people, so okay. any sort of special request will be way too difficult to accommodate. Right. I don't think it's necessarily random, I guess, in that he is going to probably try to, to break down the top puzzlers in two different divisions. So it's not like totally stacked in one division versus another in terms of like top uh, competitors who have finished and qualified in the past. So it's not entirely random, but yeah, it's it's not something where you can request. So that, thanks for pointing that out, Ali. Yeah. And then the last day, Sunday, is the team's final. And then afterwards, the award ceremony, which is, I know a lot of people, you know, bug out early because they're trying to make flights or whatever. But if you can stay, I highly recommend. It's a nice thing to just get one last chance to connect with all the people that you've met and just kind of celebrate. And usually that evening, a lot of people are going out to dinner and going to bars. And, you know, so there's lots of socializing that happens on that last night once everything is kind of over and everybody can relax and just sort of you know, breathe. <laughs> We're done. Uh, it's it's a really nice feeling on the last night. Uh, the other thing that I'll just mention, I'm not going to, like I said, read through all the rules, but you should definitely be familiarizing yourself with the rules. Um, just kind of get a sense of, uh, like Ali said, how to practice for the conditions that you're going to be working under when you're there. Um, does anybody have anything in particular? I, I've already mentioned the pairs final being a change, but is there anything else you guys think we should highlight in terms of the rules? Um, there we was had a question in the chat that someone already answered, but uh, for those who are watching the recording, just FYI, there was a question about whether you're allowed to wear headphones and listen to music. And the answer is yes, as long as your music is not loud enough that it impacts anyone around you. Mm -hmm. Which we actually have like seen that where someone's music is so loud that you can hear it. So just make sure that's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim just asked if you can have two box top holders. I imagine so because box top holders in general are allowed. Yep. Yeah, I would. Think so. I don't know what yeah. you would need them for because you're not ever doing two puzzles at the same time. But if you want to swap out with the puzzle or something, you could. I don't think that would be a problem. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's, I mean, a lot of what this like initial stuff with talking about the different categories is giving you a sense of how you move on from one, from qualifying to the semi and to the final. One of the questions that we had submitted on the Google form was when do we find out if we have qualified for the next round? Um, as the competitions are being completed, results are being entered pretty much constantly as they're coming in. There's somebody sitting and putting them in. And then they have monitors up in the venue, but it's also just on the World Jigsaw website under the results um, page. So you could just pull it up on your phone. What they do is if somebody's qualifying for the next round, they put a queue after their name, mm -hmm. but there's often a blinking queue. And that means that it's sort of indeterminate at that point. Like maybe a person seems like they've qualified thus far but then if somebody like uh, you know if the judges are putting the slips of paper in at a different order for example like volunteers are all over the floor writing the times down and then submitting them there might be somebody who finished ahead of you but their time didn't get submitted 
before yours. So it could be that somebody ended up finishing earlier than you and then now that changes it and you're no longer qualifying. So especially when you get towards the end of the qualifying, like who made it into the next round, there's a lot of blinking cues because they also have the country rule where they want a certain number of countries represented in the different categories or in the different rounds. So that can also be a determining factor. So um, I would say, you know, by the time, um, you know, the next round is starting, you'll probably know whether you qualified or not. And I mean, like, so let's say you're in the very first round of individuals, um, by the second, like, competition that happens in the individual division, you're probably going to know whether you you made it on to the semifinal or not. Um, but sometimes it can take a little while. So it's not 100% certain, but I say a little while, it's maybe a few hours, and then you should probably know. Does anybody want to tack on to that or have anything they think um, was different? I wanted to, a uh, couple things. Um, do you know from Alfonso, are we definitely going to have the seals cut again? That's not something we have to worry about. He actually still has in the rules about cutting the seal, but. Um, yeah, so I think it's going to be cut. Yeah, okay. the stickers, I believe they're mm -hmm. all going to be cut. Um, I think he's just left that in there because it was in there and then he, because it was in there last year too and they were all cut. So I think he's probably just forgotten to take that out. But that's something I should mention to him for sure. Thanks for yeah. you know, pointing that out. No, Becca, maybe if you're making notes. Yep. Um, and then also this came up last year and I had heard kind of mixed information, but there was a team that left their first puzzle assembled and assembled oh, on yes. top of that. And I thought they changed it, but I'm actually not seeing it in the rules that you must oh, that's a good point. assemble your first mm -hmm. puzzle, I think. Is that right? Yes, they changed it at the competition and made the announcement to everybody that from there on out, you had to disassemble before starting the next one. So yeah, that's another thing we should share with Alfonso to clarify that, because mm -hmm. I believe it was in the rules last time, but it was in the rules only in relation to if you decided to, to change the order that you were going to do your puzzle and like we're going to take it apart before it was done and then start the other one. Um, so there was confusion around that. But I think, yeah, the ultimate referee decision was you have to disassemble before you start the next one. Yeah, we should make sure that that's reflected in the rules. So thanks for pointing that out. That's good. Anything else anybody wants to mention about the schedule or the rules? Like I said, I think it's just really good to familiarize yourself pretty thoroughly with the rules. Yeah, wow. we've had several questions come in on the chat that are about what you're allowed to have there. So mm. there was one about sorting trays, and we encourage you to look at the rules page for that because it's different. So whether you're in an individual pair or team, you're allowed a certain number of trays. And they also have regulations on the size of trays. They will articulate it as like A1, A2. If you Google what that means, it will. We, you can also find out the conversion from centimeters to inches. Yeah. Um, Lindsay asked a great question. Can you bring extra lighting? Perhaps if you are assigned to one of the evening races. I don't believe you can bring it. Not allowed. I just right. saw yeah. it in the rules. No, I don't know if it's in there. Is it in there, yeah, Allie? It is. It is. Yep. Good. Okay. it is not allowed to bring extra lighting or use printed or digital templates. Yep. Um, there is Wi-Fi at the venue. It's decent, if I remember, but not often. Oh, I could never get on it. Okay, so not. Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh that's right. It is pretty bad. That's right. Right. I yeah. You're that is a constraint. Like if you don't have an international call plan and you want to be using Wi-Fi and stuff, it's it's probably not going to work great for you at the venue. Um, one of the things that I thought of when you guys were just talking about sort of what you can bring to the venue and the sorting trays, I do want to mention to people that with the sorting trays the measurements they give you are fairly large. That doesn't mean that you should just use the maximum size available to you. I think practice with different size trays and feel figure out what works well for you or your team um, because you might want something a lot smaller than what is allowed. So just something else to consider on the sorting tray front. Andrea, you don't um, happen to have your emotional support sorting tray handy to show us all, do you? <laughs> 
Oh, nice. Cute little baby and one. I'm going to spotlight you so everyone can see. Oh, yeah. It's approximately Great. the size of her face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good size. I don't, I don't know. I know. So Faith and I competed on the same team the very first year. And I think we had regulation sized trays. And those things were kind of a nightmare because it's like, where do you put these? They're huge. And so <laughs> if you're setting them on the table over the puzzle, you're covering a substantial amount of tables. So we were all sort of like awkwardly holding them and like, how do we, what do we do with the trays? Like we didn't really practice with trays. So we were horrible at it. <laughs> I think I, I would like put pieces on it and then take pieces off and then, oh, I'll put these pieces on it. And it was just the constants. Yeah, it was bad. Sure. But that was for the horrible puzzle that required a lot of sorting, the big, huge nighttime <laughs> disaster. So yeah, Faith, earlier you said something about the Paris puzzle last year being bad. No. The New York skyline from the year before was the absolute worst. So yeah, yeah. Give me yeah. sky and Nina. Uh -uh. No, no, not <laughs> sky. All black. <laughs> um, Another. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. In, Ellie. The, in the chat, how early should you get to the dome before competing? Great question. Do you want to answer? Um, I think Kyle actually answered that nicely. Yeah, there were quite a few, yeah, Kyle actually threw in a good answer, quite a few races where they, they wouldn't open the doors until like 15 or 20 minutes before, but it's always good to give some wiggle room in case something changes. So I don't know, I think maybe I'd aimed to be there like a half an hour in advance. Allie, I would tack onto that. There's been uh, some stuff in the chat and also we got some questions in advance around the bathroom situation. So if you uh -huh. intend to use the bathroom before your race. You want to leave enough time to anticipate there might be a line. Um, and mm -hmm. then you've also probably seen in the chat, folks are offering tips around bringing your own toilet paper. That sounds absurd, but you will want to have it. And, I mean, and I, hand sanitizer. Too. Yes. And hand sanitizer. I, I, or you could also, I mean, I, it's weird, but a lot of places in Europe, they don't use washcloths at their hotel. And so I'm, I bring washcloths with me, which sounds crazy, but I, I like a washcloth. So I always have them. And I actually am like legit going to bring one to the venue because I would wash my hands and I prefer soap and water versus like, mm. you know, hand sanitizer. And then I didn't have anything to dry them on. So because they ran out of paper towels, but I, I'm i working with that. Alfonso on the bathroom situation. I'm Ooh. like, this can't, this is unacceptable. This really can't bad. happen this time. Like it was really bad last time with just being kind of overall and disgusting. No they're not going to wait for you if you're in the bathroom line. So don't right. plan, like go to the bathroom before you go to the dome is what I would suggest if you don't want to run into problems. Yeah. Um, there was a question. If you want to go to the bathroom during the contest, like there's no line then. <laughs> so yeah. you can always run out. Yeah. But, you know, obviously it's taking away from your time. So not a great solution. <laughs> um, there was a question if Alfonso divides pre prelims in a way that there are equal number of Americans in each round and I do think he tries to generally spread out because the Americans yep. the Spaniards and what other countries have like a huge Germany has a ton time. this year I think they're just ahead of us and how many are going so yeah we're we're the three but three the three largest presence right now at the event are Spain Germany and the U.S. so yeah but I think he focuses primarily on speediness of um competitors right. I'm all else trying to keep that even from round to round. Yes, exactly. Um, a few people have asked, um, and I've seen this just in chat and other places, um, if like all of the puzzles are original, similar to like at nationals where we had all unpublished puzzle puzzles this year, that is not the case at Worlds. So it does behoove you to do a lot of Robinsberger puzzles in preparation for the event. Um, I, the finals especially will... The finals puzzles will all be unpublished. I think semifinals, that is the goal, but I don't know that that's for sure going to be happening. I know that was one of his goals was to have the semifinal puzzles also be unpublished, but I don't know kind of where that's at. And I don't share a lot of that stuff because it's top secret. So, <laughs> so yeah, you'll just have to wait and see, but definitely, yeah, practice Robinsberger. Shall we transition over to the questions that were submitted in advance? Sure. Um, a couple things. Did you, so sorry. 
Oh, I froze for a second. Did you, uh, when you were talking about the um, the fact that there will be some already published puzzles, did you point out that they have definitely used uh, puzzles from previous uh, Spanish competition? Oh, no, I didn't. But that's a good hot tip there, Allie. Good, good idea. I'm disadvantaging also... myself by sharing yeah. that, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, another thing that came as a big surprise last year was the addition of like round puzzles and panoramic puzzles because previously it had been usually pretty much your standard kind of rectangular puzzles. And then he switched it up a little last year. And I think that was in an effort to just create more buzz, but also have people having to do a variety um so i think you can probably expect that as well that there's going to be a variety this time around i don't know because i have not seen anything uh <laughs> i'm just saying if i was preparing i would be thinking about that like doing puzzles that are shaped and you know as far as within the Ravensburger line yep. uh somebody had asked if uh they could volunteer or if there was an ability to volunteer we are working with Alfonso to develop some way of having people from the U.S. volunteer. There were not enough judges last year. Um, Allie has a whole story about that, <laughs> where they couldn't get somebody to come over and mark down their time on their first 1,000 piece so that they could start the next one, and that's a problem. So um, we've Make sure offered... to wave your hands early as you're finishing that Wave your that hands first early time. to to get their attention yeah but yeah we we've talked to Alfonso about that about having some um an ability for people to volunteer as judges and to help out with the event we are just kind of working on that we're we're hoping we can just kind of create a google form put it out to people and then collaborate with Alfonso to kind of coordinate that piece and what that will look like so so we will keep you posted keep keep an eye out for that there are uh, we, two outstanding questions from the mm -hmm. chat that we did answer in the chat, but I want to share out loud for those who are watching the recording. Mm -hmm. uh, so one was, do you have recommendations on where to stay for the competition? Should you stay in Valladolid or Madrid? And Ali responded, mm -hmm. uh, Valladolid for sure. And ideally yeah. you want to be within walking distance of the venue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I put like about, add on that. ideally probably like a 20 minute walk um, or mm -hmm. less. Less would be even better. But that's kind of the max I would do as you're looking for places to stay more than that. And it, there's a lot of walking back and forth. Mm -hmm. So um, as close as you can is really ideal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like, I mean, Valladolid doesn't have like a subway. So it's not like you can just jump on a on a train quick and like get there in a few minutes. Like that's not a thing there. Um, so it is just a lot of walking typically. Um, yeah, so that's a good answer to that question. But yeah, Madrid is still over, it's like, what, an hour and a half, close to two hours, maybe for the, like, faster train. So it's not really doable to stay in Madrid and compete. Um, unless you just think you're going to compete like once, I guess, then maybe, <laughs> but hopefully you'd advance. So I would think you'd want to be staying closer. A um, couple other questions. We already talked a little about the Guinness that we're just going to have to update you on that because we're not 100% sure what that's going to look like yet. Um, how much time will they give us to pick our team's puzzles in the team prelim? So somebody asked about that. That is a great question. Not a lot of time. Um, they basically start the competition at the time they say they're going to start it. The puzzles are already on your table. You get an opportunity. Last time they just stacked them like four high. And so they weren't even in bags. So you could kind of see them from the side in the venue. Everybody was like peeking at tables, trying to get a close look at them. And you could kind of see enough to, to talk about it with your team and be like, I think we're going to want to do this, you know, but you get to your t table. They're all right there. Um, it's, you know, ideally you should be able to make the decision fairly quickly within a few minutes because then they'll have volunteers coming around and saying, okay, which ones are you going to do? And then they officially set aside the two that you're not planning to do. Um, so yeah, you want to be able to make the decision fairly quickly. Any other comments on that from those with experience? Choose no. wisely. Sorry. Yeah, do choose wisely. It does make a big difference. Yep. Um, Don't. It's actually the one that who... looks pretty. <laughs> or the one that you haven't done yet that's on your kitchen table as we may have run into that <laughs> but it, it does behoove you to actually practice choosing um if you can I think it was was it 
Becca, was it Suzanne that did like a whole statistical, to try to do statistical analysis of that? Yes, this was amazing. So one of my teammates last year uh, is a very impressive uh, software person and computational linguist, and she uh, built a website for us. And the four of us would get randomly generated um, collections of four 1000 piece Ravensburger puzzles and just very quickly uh, go with what your instinct was. And then we compared our results. And it, it was actually informative. I don't think you have to go to the extent of building your own website, but <laughs> having a conversation with your team about like when you look at a puzzle image, what makes you think it's going to be fast for four people to do can be really informative. Um, like what looks the most sortable, what kind of aspects or should frighten you away. Mm -hmm. Those, those mm -hmm. things are helpful to chat through in advance. Um, yep. Perhaps even most, especially if you're not able to practice with your team live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it made a big difference. Part of the reason that our finish got missed, um, our first finish got missed in the finals is because we didn't choose very wisely and we ended up placing a lot lower than we, we would have if we would have kind of chosen what other people people did and so we were down a lot further they didn't expect us to be finishing that early where we were uh, based at and and so yeah it can make a big difference i would also say to keep in mind the size of the puzzle that it's a 1000 piece puzzle because i think sometimes people look at an image and they go oh i love doing a sky and let's say it's like you know one of these images where it's like three quarters of sky and then the quarter you know the bottom quarter is something else i think people think oh I love sky. Let's do sky. But it's like, if it's 750 pieces of sky, that's going to take you a lot longer than if it was 300 pieces of sky and you're doing a 500 piece puzzle or whatever. I can't do the math that quickly, but yeah, I mean, just be, be conscious of that, that, that mm -hmm. the size makes a big difference. So if you're on a thousand versus a 500, that's going to affect how many pieces we're talking about. Cause I think I saw that went back when we did the 1500 piece puzzles, there were people that picked very that very bright like comic book kind of image because it was so bright and the color like there were these great areas of like the blonde hair and the red car or whatever but then people picked that and then it was like you had 500 pieces of blonde hair and it was a mm -hmm. real problem so uh just being cognizant of that um uh, Faith touched on this earlier. How many puzzles might we end up bringing home? If you make it through all the rounds, you're going to have a lot of puzzles to bring home. So is it cheaper to pay for an extra suitcase to check or do we ship them home? Allie, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's usually cheaper to pay for extra suitcase because it's like, you know, 50 bucks or something like that. And the, sh the shipping internationally, I, I, I put my name here, but I don't actually know the answer to that, but it's, it's far more, especially for how many you bring back. Uh, I know for for some of the puzzles, we get really creative about how we store the boxes in there, kind of box within box, or um, you know, some of the boxes we break down if we don't feel super strongly about those. Um, and there's a lot of boxes that get left at the um, hotel. There's something called Puzzle Pandas, and it's a program where you leave puzzles um, in spots as kind of little gift for random strangers. So uh, I would recommend looking that up uh, as another way to deal with all the puzzles. Another thing I'll just mention on that front is don't necessarily think you have to bring an extra suitcase because I've literally just grabbed a box because the world's yeah. venue has a lot of boxes because right. they are unboxing all the Robinsberger puzzles prior to putting them out for competition. So they have like a gazillion empty boxes. So I would just ask Alfonso like, Hey, can I get a box and here big empty box? And I just put the puzzles in that taped it up really good and checked that at the airport. You don't have to have it in a suitcase. They will check a box. So that's another option. Val, I would also add, um, Dawn put a really great tip in the chat, which is to bring bags, bring plastic bags with you. Because when you start the competition, you're going to be really excited and just rip the hell out of that plastic bag and not be able to reuse it. So if you bring your own Ziplocs, that will be really helpful for uh, maintaining all those puzzle pieces that you'll be shoving in your suitcase later. Yeah, that's a great idea. And if you don't care about the boxes, you can save a lot of space in your luggage by just putting the pieces in the Ziploc bag and throwing it in your, in your suitcase that way. 
Um, another great question we had is do people bring practice or warm up puzzles and then share them or leave them there? Uh, anybody want to tackle that question? Faith, maybe? I see you nodding. You're muted. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, um, definitely. There's puzzles everywhere. It's so great. Um, and yeah, I think if you bring a couple practice puzzles and you'll likely then run into other puzzlers and, and can do a, a swap with them. So um, I yeah, so I mean, it's always a good idea to bring a practice puzzle or two. Um, and if you, you know, if you strategize, right, each teammate brings one, then you're not filling your suitcase with too many puzzles again, because you'll be bringing them back. And they do sell the puzzle. Last time, at least they sold the puzzles once they were um, opened. And I know Melinda asked if the sales will be cash only this year. I'm not sure that we know the answer to that unless Val does. No, don't know the answer to that one. Um, quickly, they, I'll just they answer. were last year. That's that's the genesis of the question, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So last yeah. year we had we had some really entertaining, probably shady looking dealings going around in the back of the tent with like who has euros, and <laughs> um, <laughs> we had a spreadsheet of who owed whom yeah. what by the end of the week. Yeah, they do sell the puzzles. Robinsberger has an area where they're selling the competition puzzles. So if you don't make it into a semifinal or final, you can buy them there. Um, the other thing that they had last time, I don't know if it's coming back, I would guess it is, is they had a giant merch area where you could actually select like a sweatshirt and then you could even select the design and they just did the ironing on like right there, um, which was really cool. And they had lots of different options for designs. So there is a lot of cool merch you can get. Um, and we will on be doing like for mm -hmm. any, for anyone that's not um, attending, we will be doing a traveling puzzle, some traveling puzzle bundles from these puzzles. Mm -hmm. So yeah. those will fill up in seconds is my guess though. So. And I just to add on to all that, I think someone mentioned it, but like the merch does sell out and the puzzles, some, some of the puzzles sell out. So yeah, don't wait till the last minute uh, to mm -hmm. decide if you want something. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, another quick competition related question. How much downtime is there if you're participating in all three events? I feel like one of you should answer that because I have no downtime. I sit at a live stream desk for 14 hours a day <laughs> so I'm a terrible person to ask but what do you guys think if you're doing all the contests and you move on or is do you get a fair amount um I let me I'll take this one because I like talk about poor time management as I get older I need sleep so which <laughs> I always get there the Friday you know I leave the Friday before so I can overcome the jet lag which I do fine with but I'm so excited to see my friends that I do a really bad job of like getting enough rest and so it really caught up to me so there's plenty of downtime it's just use your downtime wisely go take a nap um faith does like a lot of chatting yeah. um in her downtime <laughs> and i disappear because i'm yeah. like i need to rest because it's a lot everyone's really excited to hang out um, I, I also think you're like, I, I was, I'm excited to watch the U S competitors, like whether you're my friend or not, I just get super excited to watch everyone. So like, I was always like, I'm going to go back to my room. I'm going to go rest. And I never did. Cause I really enjoyed staying. So, um, just, <laughs> you again, watch your the time wisely. There's, your there is plenty. Mm -hmm. And the bio delete is, I don't, we haven't really touched on this, but it is like a very well. cute European, like, I want to say medieval town. I don't know if it's settled, but there are like, there is a cathedral there that you can visit. Uh, the, the center of town is walkable. There's no cars. There's fantastic food, shopping. Um, and so like in between your puzzling, you know, you can go with friends and you can go uh, shop. There's a square with, you know, restaurants where you can sit outside and enjoy a drink. Um, just very very lovely little town that um you know after you're there for like a week you're like okay i've seen everything but it, but it's still nice to go back uh mm -hmm. so enjoy enjoy it all right another really good question how to find a teammate so becca we're we're letting you take that one because you you use this system i did yeah i have a funny story so about two weeks before worlds last year i found out that my partner and one quarter of our team um, decided that she didn't like speed puzzling. And so I went, we, we went, oh, what are we going to do? 
Uh, and we discovered that Alfonso had created this very cool uh, feature in the website where you could indicate if you were looking for a partner or a team. So we filtered it by US participants. And that's how I found the absolutely lovely Hannah Scott, who was my partner and uh, ended up on the podium with us for teams. So it worked out fortuitously. But I'm going to share my screen and show you how to find that. So you have to go to the World Jigsaw Puzzle page and log in. And when you are logged in, you will now see a blinking thing here that says find your pair. And he just put this up recently. So there's not a lot of folks listed on here yet. But if you go to that site, you'll be able to see some people who are looking for a partner or who are looking for a team. And if you yourself want to indicate that you are looking for a partner or looking for a team, what you're going to do is go to my account. And then you're going to click on the my inscriptions page. Uh, which shows the things that you're registered for or have been registered for through his system in the past. And then you would click on Worlds 2024. And if let's say you were looking for your partner, you can now indicate this button that says, I want to register, but I don't have a pair yet. And that will make you show up um, on that page. And it's really nice. You do uh, want to keep checking back for it though. As you can see, there's not a lot of folks listed on there yet, but as people become aware of this, um, there was a lot of action on that site within the last couple of weeks right before Worlds. You can also use our Facebook forum. I know some folks have done that in the past, just posted, hey, I'm, I'm going and I'm looking for someone and, and have sourced things that way too, if, that, if you're looking for a lower tech, easier option for now. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else want to add to that? No, that was great. Thanks for doing that. That was awesome. Yeah, I think... Um... Let's see, we, we're kind of getting through the kind of event contest related things. There's a couple just quick ones. Um, they Did they provide or do they provide instructions and announcements in English? And yes, they do. They have a Spanish speaking person and Charlie Kendall. He's the kind of translator and he speaks fluent Spanish and English. And so he always gets up and, and provides translation for things. Um, and it's very easy to know when to start because they literally count down uh, in Spanish. <laughs> they do a countdown, but then it's just like, go. So <laughs> don't worry, you're not going to miss anything uh, due to a language barrier. You're definitely going to know when to start. And then somebody did ask, what are the differences between how the contests are run at nationals versus worlds? I don't think there's a lot of difference. Do you guys, can you think of anything? I, I feel like it's very similar. I mean, you should look at the rules because the qualifying for additional rounds is going to be different because of the number of competitors, um, you know, but we try yeah. to replicate worlds as much as we can yeah. so that people are getting a similar experience and would know what to expect. It's bigger and there are more people, so it's louder. Um, yeah. That's a big one. Yep. I will say too, that that can get really confusing for people because if there are a lot of spectators, which there typically are, because you mm -hmm. think about it, if you have 1200 individuals competing and there's only 200 in each round, that means you've got a thousand people standing around with nothing to do during that time. <laughs> that might be like, Hey, let's go over and watch and see how others are doing. So there can be quite a few people gathered in the space. And I think one of the things that really threw off a lot of puzzlers last time was Last year was the first time that the live stream was playing in the venue on a big, huge screen, which meant that, and there's a slight delay. So that's also a bit weird because there's a slight delay from what people are seeing up there and what's actually happening in the venue. Um, but what happened last time is people would get so excited as somebody was getting close to finishing. So let's say Alejandro, it's he's in a division, it's him and one other person and they're neck and neck. And the crowd would literally start to make a lot of noise before anybody had finished because of the anticipation of watching the live stream. So by the time somebody did finish, there would be this explosion of excitement and like noise. And I think that was pretty off putting for a lot of the puzzlers who would just be like, what in the heck just happened? But it's because all these hundreds of people that are in the back of the room are watching the live stream and seeing what's happening. So it, it can get pretty noisy in there. Um, yeah. And also like, you know, when you're like a quarter of the way done with the puzzle and Alejandro's finished, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah. I think um, a lot of people didn't know if they were like 
the crowd would get so noisy. So then would people, people would sort of be like, wait, did I finish first? And they wouldn't necessarily know because people had been making noise already for like 10, 15 seconds or whatever. So yeah, it could get a little confusing for people. Awesome. Um, I think this question belongs with um, what we're talking about, which is how tight is the space between tables? That is something that's different between nationals and worlds that is a little more spread out. Um, it's not super spacious. Uh, is it best to move chairs if you plan on standing up? There's not really a place where you could really kind of move them to. So, um, you know, I stand for the majority of my puzzling and, um, you know, I just sort of deal with it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's nowhere to really put your chairs. It's not like you can just stack them up off to this. You know, there's there's no space in the venue for that. So you're going to kind of have to work around the chairs. Somebody did ask if the venue is large enough to accommodate socializing or practicing in other areas. It's definitely large enough for the socializing. There's a lot of that that's happening in kind of the back of the space um, behind all the puzzlers, but there's no additional tables or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have anywhere to practice or, or, you know, do a puzzle while you're, while you're hanging out and watching. I'm just sitting on the floor. Yeah. And then, yeah, there's not hardly even seating for spectators. That's another thing. There's, I think there were a few chairs that they put out for spectators last year, but it's a lot of standing around. Um, so be prepared for that to bring comfortable shoes. <laughs> there's a lot of standing somebody... and it's not like a cushy floor or something. It's pretty hard. So yeah. yeah. Somebody had asked very early on in the chat if spectators need to register. So if you are not participating in a race, you do not need to register. The, the doors will just be open, you know, 15 or 20 minutes before the race. Um, and a lot of times we will go and like cheer each other on in other, other races. But yeah, as Val said, it is tight and warm and you will be standing the whole time. So sometimes people will uh, choose to come in, you know, 30 minutes after the race started just to catch the exciting part. And that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't think I, I don't think there were a lot of people hanging out for that pairs final last time. <laughs> it was at night and yeah, so there's that and it was hard. So there weren't any finishers. It wasn't terribly exciting to, to watch, but it was exciting when people did start to finish. But yeah, by that time of day, the spectators had really thinned out too. I felt like it's usually busier earlier in the day. Yeah. Um, to go along with that, uh, regarding COVID prevention, do some people mask up? It, was it a problem in team communication? It doesn't affect team communication. Um, it is it is really tight in there. Um, a couple of years ago, it was somewhat of a super spreader event. So yeah. if you are worried about it, it would behoove you to mask up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically it was like the the weekend got over and on Monday somebody was like, I have COVID in the WhatsApp chat. Um, <laughs> and then it was, I have COVID too. I have COVID too. It was kind of insane. I think there were like 26 or so of us that competed. And I think, you know, three quarters. We all got it. <laughs> yeah, really that was a lot. Uh, speaking of the WhatsApp chat, um, yeah. we had a question about that. So Allie, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I'll take that one. So, okay. Um, so actually right now would be a good time to share that link if someone can in the chat. So we have a WhatsApp chat group uh, for all of the people attending. If you're not attending, it would be great if you don't join that um, just to keep it simple and not a lot of extra chatter um, because there are gonna be about 120 people going and potentially in that chat. So the purpose of this chat is a couple of things. It's to allow us to communicate with everyone if we we need to, and that's going to be the quickest way. We're not going to do a text chain, um, and so it allows us to to send announcements and things like that if we need to during the weekend. Um, it's also a space where if if one of you all has an announcement before we do for some reason, please feel free to post that in there. Um, as far as social events, uh, we have had people kind of say, "Hey, I'm going to head to." you know, this place, if people want to come join, that's totally acceptable. Um, what we don't want, because there's so many people in there is like full on conversations. So if you're having a back and forth with just the same person, you know, maybe three times or something, go ahead and take that offline, you should be able to grab that person's info and set up a separate WhatsApp group. 
Um, so just try to keep that in mind so that people, um, not only so that people aren't getting just regular communicate or incessant communications, but also so it doesn't flood the chat so people can see the, the kind of important things in there. And we'll try to, we'll be in there kind of guiding throughout the weekend, but. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, watching um, the recording I I you earlier. Join? What was that? Well, sorry, I was just, if there are folks watching the recording who want to join the WhatsApp group, should they email us for the link? No, no, go ahead and put it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's there. Oh, oh then, like the recording, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would oh, say that's yes. a good go idea. Ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and yeah. send us an email. And we yep. can probably send that out in the, um, an email to competitors. Sorry, I misheard you there. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you kind of treat it like a, our Facebook forum in, in that sense where you're not having full conversations, um, it'll be good. Yep. Somebody asked too, is there an optional way to share cell phone numbers if we have an international plan and we're getting to Spain early and we want to connect and maybe sightsee with other puzzlers? I think just use the WhatsApp group for that. It, you don't have to wait until you're in Spain to use the WhatsApp. Like if you join it and then a lot of other people join it, you can start using it right now and just say like, are people, you know, if you have questions about the travel arrangements or you want to just put it out there to say, hey, I'm arriving on this date. Is anybody else going to be in Madrid and want to get together? Like, that's a good way to, to do that. Um, and then, like Ali said, if you get some responses, then maybe take that to a separate chat thread or something um, to make your further arrangements. But that is definitely something you should do if, if you want to try to connect with other puzzlers while you're yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely meant to to help you connect. So don't yep. feel free. Um, a couple of things I want to mention because we're getting close to the eight fifteen time period. Um, obviously, if there's things we didn't touch on and you're just still like have questions, go ahead and email us. Um, we'll do our best. But first, I would say go to our FAQ page on the website. We have a world specific FAQ and. Everybody's been, all the board members have been keeping track on a document of all the things that were asked tonight. So we'll go back and look at that FAQ and see if there's things we could add. We've got a few others um, before you wrap up though. Well, I wanted to mention oh, some right. of the other stuff, like um, yeah, yeah. we are planning a meetup um, in Valladolid. We are going to do something similar to what we did last time, which is um, I've got a link and we're going to share that out with everybody via email. But if one of you wants to put the Google map link, um, what we're planning is that on Wednesday uh, morning, we're going to um, meet as a group it's outside at the Valladolid sign, which is in Plaza, I think it's called Zaria, basically on the way to the Millennium Dome. It's right near the bridge where that you need to cross to get over to the dome. Um, so we're going to have a meetup there as a group, and we'll try to plan it so we have enough time that people can kind of meet by region and introduce themselves and get to know a few people um, that you know you might already know or that live in your area and then uh, we'll take a group photo and then all head over to the dome together so but if you know there's not a competition that you're in right immediately after or anything you could you wouldn't have to go to the dome after you could just go out on the town if you wanted whatever you wanted to do but we'll share more details on that as we get closer we're also planning a fun little kind of keepsake for all the people that are attending from the U.S. that will give out um, to you at that time and if you're not able to do the meetup we'll try to track you down or you can just come find one of us at the yeah. venue and we'll get that to you and the other announcement is we are working on a plan for potentially having t-shirts available. Um, so if people want matching kind of USA t-shirts, um, we're working on something where you would be able to order it direct and have it sent to you. So we will keep you posted on that as well. We're working on making sure it gets there a little earlier this time. Right. Last time we had some issues that they got shipped out like the week before and it was like a lot of people were leaving already. So it was a bit of a problem. So we're, we're ahead of the game. game this time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, if you want to mention the other questions, Allie, I just was trying to be kind of sort of yeah, get no, all those great. announcements in before we wrap up. We did. You did. Excellent. <laughs> it's 16 <laughs> after. That's on point. Because Yeah, we'll have to, um, some of us will have to head out. Surely the one um there I think the only one that um popped up 
in the chat that we haven't answered yet is regarding BioDelid, which kind of flows into the last few things you had there, but are taxis and Ubers readily available in BioDelid? And for the most part, everything's pretty um, walkable uh, unless you live or unless you stay like fairly far away. And um, so I, I don't actually know many people that that used one because everyone just tried to stay close. And and with the amount of back and forth, I just highly recommend staying close and, and not trying to to Uber or anything. The, the oh, transition yeah, is walkable. Mm -hmm. I've actually looked into this because we have at least one person going with some mobility challenges this year. Mm -hmm. And for oh, our great. taxis, they just aren't usually around that particular part of the city center. So if you are staying pretty close to the dome, you might actually need to call for a taxi to take you there and back if you uh, need that. Mm, good yeah, I, I remember using taxis and stuff for the airport and things like that. And the hotel can help you make arrangements too um, yeah, for that kind of thing if it's like early morning hours and you need to get to the train station or something like that. So I did use that on occasion. So there are things available. It's just not maybe as convenient as bigger cities. Yeah, I think there's like, I think there's not Uber, but there's some other like app for right. taxis, um, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, definitely ask your hotel for things. Like if you're staying in a hotel, if you're in an Airbnb, obviously then you don't have that option. But um, I asked my hotel for stuff all the time and they were like, sure. And like helping point things out to me and, and call taxis and things like that. So there were also some questions about the food situation, um, which is a, which can be challenging in Vidalid for two mm -hmm. primary reasons. One is the, the Spanish schedule does not closely align with our competition schedule. So oftentimes we would finish at the end of the day and have to wait for an hour or two before restaurants were open for dinner. Um, so it is advisable to visit a grocery store and get some snackage early on in the week. Um, the other thing that can be challenging is if you have certain dietary restrictions, the Spanish culture is very meat forward, for instance. So a lot of the vegetarians kind of banded together last year and found some decent options. Uh, most ironically, the best meal that I had in Valladolid last year was at an Indian restaurant which was the only time that entire week I ate something that was green. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot, not a lot of vegetables. <laughs> a lot of meat and bread. Yeah, for sure. Um, there are fast food places too. Um, so if you do need to grab something quick, I am gluten-free and in America, fast food is just not really an option. But shockingly, when you go to Spain, Burger King, McDonald's, they all have like gluten-free buns on the menu and gluten-free fryers and stuff. So I was like, wait, what? So I think I seem like an ugly American because I go and I eat at Burger King like four times, but I'm like, I never get Burger King. <laughs> so I'm excited to have Burger King. Um, so Mike was like, I'd be sitting at the live stream desk and he's running to Burger King and coming back and like every day I'm eating Burger King and I'm sure everybody was like, oh God, that that's horrible. Cool. Like you should be eating tapas. So it's like, no, this is actually great. I love this so much. <laughs> so that's another thing. I'm trying to find, uh, the, the, the grocery store that most people went to. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the chat, but it is, yeah. it is wise to get like, to have right. like energy bars something mm -hmm. quick and easy that you yep. can because the sometimes the competitions start really early so I like bought I bought breakfast at my hotel and there were multiple days I couldn't eat it it was really bad <laughs> another thing I'll point out too is stuff doesn't open very early so if you're thinking I'm gonna go hit a bakery and a coffee shop and like you know or the grocery store even the grocery store might not open in nine or nine thirty and so if you're getting an early start or you're you know I, it's just a different schedule that they're operating on over there there's also a lot of places that might close for the kind of siesta time in the mid-afternoon so you might just not be able to find things like if you're going out and want to get like a late lunch at 2 30 or three o'clock or something um and dinner definitely is later hours like becca mentioned it's like they'll have dinner sometimes at like 11 at night you know 10 30 so stuff is open late uh but not super early and midday is not great and a lot of places don't open in the morning until rather late as well. You just don't like to do like a lot of having their stores open. That's like their main. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. used to live yeah. there for a while, not in Valladolid in Madrid. And that was. Oh, she froze. 
Um, mm -hmm. Andrew asked in the chat, do most of the hotels have mini fridges? I, I believe so. The like three or four hotels where most of the U.S. folks were congregated last year all did. Yep. And I actually, my, one of my favorite memories from last year was that I went to the grocery store and the snack options were pretty bleak. So I think I probably went to a different store than the one Allie's talking about. Um, but the most exciting thing that I got was this cheese multi-pack, which I kept <laughs> in my mini fridge. And when I showed up at the dome and, and opened that cheese on the grass in front of the dome, I made so many international friends that day because everyone was just <laughs> like, oh my God, protein and just descended on <laughs> It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be prepared for different. I mean, I wouldn't say like pack a bunch of food and bring it with you. That's probably not a good idea. Um, they have like a good size grocery store that's walkable from the venue. Um, but yeah, it's just going to have different choices. So I know for yeah. me, it was a little tough with being gluten free. There wasn't always a ton of things to choose from. I ate a lot of fruit. Because uh, fruit is plentiful as well as cheesecake. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so if you like those things, you're you're all set. Any other things we haven't addressed? I kind of want to, I have to go eat supper somewhere before everything closes here in a tiny <laughs> Minnesota town. So I think what else? we can do is, is we'll stop the recording here. And then those of us who can stay will hang out in the room in case you have additional questions. Or also, if you all want to just use this space to connect and meet each other and chat, you're welcome to do that too. Yeah, that's a great idea. We did want people to have an opportunity to connect. So, and for you to talk if you would like. So yeah, with that, I'll thank everybody for being here. You don't have to leave. Don't leave. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I want to thank everybody. If you're watching the recording, thank you for checking it out. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. This has been great. Yay.